the Bible says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, and then may you meet in my house, says the Lord. And prove me now here with and see if I will not open up the window of heaven and pour out blessings that you have not room enough to receive. I'm excited about what God is doing, and so I'm, I'm looking forward to some blessings. Amen. Our actions are coming to receive our tithes and offering today. Please make ready for our tithes and offering. Amen. Amen. Our scripture this morning. We find that we'll find in Romans, the fourth chapter, fourth chapter of Romans. Romans, the fourth chapter, verse 13. As you find it, you may feel free if you wish to stand. chapter verses 13 through 25 from the new King James version of the Bible you should find these words for well, the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law but through the righteousness of faith for well, those who are of the law are heirs Faith is made void and the promise made of no effect. Because the law brings about wrath. For where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not only to those who are of the law, but those who are of the faith of Abraham who is the father of all of us. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who contrary to hope, in hope, believed so that he became the father of many nations According to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what God had promised God was able to fulfill it. And therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now it was written for his sake alone. Now it was not written for his sake alone that was imputed to him, but also for us. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered up because of our offenses and raised because of our justification. You may be seated. This morning, I like to use as a subject, as a title for our sermon today, An Uncommon Faith. An Uncommon Faith. Orlando, can you take that down and Ted? Brother Bruce, Grant, we read, we did our offertory prayer today. If you notice, he has on his camouflage tie. Those brothers who have on your camouflage ties today stand. I know all of us didn't wear them today. Amen. Your camouflage bow ties. Amen. These are brothers who are part of our band of brothers, Men's Fellowship on Tuesday evenings in the Family Life Center. We invite all of you men to come and be a part. As a matter of fact, those others who are here and who do not have on your bow ties, would you please stand as well, those who have, amen. 
some folks not here this morning, amen. Right. You all may be seated. Some of the gentlemen who come are not members of our church. They are from our various communities, and we welcome all to fellowship together. It's an opportunity for men to get together and to talk among men, amen. 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 I'm going to leave you right there. I'm going to leave you right there, amen, amen. But as I'm talking about men on this day, these women, would you stand up if you are a Woman, would you please stand? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Today is International Women's Day. And so I want to say to all of our women, Happy International Women's Day. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. You may be seated. An uncommon faith. You all have recognized that I've been on this uncommon journey. Trying to work in us and, 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 and heed us and to call our attention to the challenge of being an uncommon community. When we talk about an uncommon community, we talk about what? A community rooted and grounded in love, where we love each other unconditionally which we think is uncommon if you look at how most people treat each other in the world. We talked about what an uncommon community would be, and then we talked about what an uncommon resolution to our problems are. When somebody does something against you, don't run around gossiping and telling everybody else, go to your brother in love. Go to your sister in love directly. Talk to them. If that don't work, grab a couple other people and take them with you. If it don't work at that time, you need to go get to church. Come on in my office. We're going to talk about it a little something. Then we spent some time talking about the uncommon freedom. The freedom to forgive, to have a spirit of forgiveness. Allowing us to forgive folks who don't deserve our forgiveness. But ridding ourselves of the cancer which, which tears us apart when we don't forgive. And we talked about the uncommon compassion. That ability to really love folks. Like Jesus loved us. Today I'm going to talk about an uncommon faith. All right. For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law. The law wasn't going to do it. But through the righteousness of faith. Paul explains that Abraham had pleased God through Abraham's faith alone. Before he had ever heard about the rituals that would be so, become so important to the Jewish people, he recognized that he had faith in God. We too are saved by faith plus nothing. It is not by loving God and doing good that we are saved. Neither is it by faith plus love or faith plus good works. We are saved only through faith in Christ. Amen. Trusting him to forgive all of our sins. The ability for us to be like him and be forgiving ourselves, that's not about our salvation. That's about our life. That's about our living. That's about our freedom. That's why you have some of the meanest people in the world who sit in pews like this every Sunday morning. You don't get to heaven by doing good and being good. You get to heaven because of his grace. But your doing good and being good can change your life down here. Take away some wrinkles. Perhaps remove some of the stuff that you're dealing with. So what we want to understand is the promise or the covenant God gave to Abraham stated that Abraham would be the father of many nations and the entire world would be blessed through him. The promise was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Jesus was from Abraham's line. And truly the whole world has been blessed through Christ. Hallelujah. Abraham never doubted that God would fulfill his promise. Abraham's life was marked by mistakes, sins, and failures, as well as by wisdom and goodness, but he consistently trusted 
God. Yeah. His faith was strengthened by the obstacles that he faced and his life was an example of faith and action. If he had looked only at his own resources for subduing Canaan and founding a nation, he would have given up in despair. But Abraham looked to God, obeyed him, and waited for him to fulfill what he said he would do. He waited for God to fulfill his word. When we believe, an exchange takes place. We give Christ our sins. And he gives us righteousness and forgiveness. There is nothing we can do to earn this. Only through Christ can we receive God's richness, richness and righteousness. What an incredible bargain that is for us. That's a bargain. You're Amen. talking about running out to Macy's and catching one of their sales or running over to the pizza shop getting a bobo. But the real blessing, the real incredible bargain is what we get in our relationship with God. We give God faith. He gives us the world. But sadly, many of us still choose to pass this gift to continue enjoying sin and sinfulness, <clears throat> continue enjoying meanness, continue enjoying unforgiveness, continue enjoying hard-heartedness, continue enjoying being a bully, continue enjoying being the only one who's right about everything at all times, and no one else can tell you anything. Wow. The reality is that, oh my gosh, the bargain that we have received because because of Christ, I have the power to forgive. Because of Christ, I have the power to love. Because of Christ, I have the power to be compassionate. Oh, no. To consider someone else's needs and consider someone else's thoughts and to consider someone else's body and to consider someone else's heart. Right. As opposed to being self-centered, self-absorbed, and self-righteous. The righteousness that we have ought to be a righteousness that comes down from God himself. A self-righteousness takes you nowhere. A self-righteousness gets you nothing. Because you know what a self-righteousness does? It puts you above everybody else. And there's nobody above everybody else than God. And that's why through his righteousness we have the ability to be blessed. We need in our lives an uncommon faith. Did Abraham have an uncommon faith? He absolutely did. God came to this old man at 100 years old and said to this man, you are going to be the father of many nations. He said, he looked around like that. And could you imagine? He felt his body, his body was dead. It couldn't produce anything. And Sarah's womb had for years been unable to produce. But God. God said it. Abraham believed it. That settled it. There was nothing else necessary. He didn't have to run around to prove God. He didn't have to run around to make sure that God, he believed God. And that's the thing I want to share with us today as we talk about this message of an uncommon faith. Whom he believed. God. He believed God. Yes. Verses 13 to 15 says, For the promise that he would be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law. The law couldn't do it. The reason Jesus came is because we couldn't keep the law. Amen. We've been running back and forth over there for the past month talking about the ability to forgive somebody. The Bible tells us to forgive and we're struggling with it even right now. He couldn't keep the law. We couldn't keep the law. Jesus came to fulfill the law, to free us from the law. So it wasn't through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if those who were of the law are heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of no effect because the law brings about wrath. When you break the law, that's punishment. But when there is no law, there is no transgression. What if we were like Germany on the Autobahn and there was no speed limit? If regardless of how fast you drive, you wouldn't be breaking any laws. The only reason you break laws now is because the law says that it's 25 miles per hour all day long. 
Abraham believed God, God who revives. It is God himself that faith fastens upon. Now I'm saying what Abraham's eye had seen, God who revives the dead. It was promised that he should be the father of many nations when he and his wife were now good as dead. And therefore he looks upon God as the great God that could breathe life into their situation. Only God can allow a hundred year old man to be fertile. Only God can allow a woman who is 99 and her womb has been infertile for years or unable to bear children for years. Only God can change that. And I don't care what you're dealing with today. I don't care what you're going through today. Everything you're facing right now, God has the power, the ability, and the will to change it up for you. which are not as if they were. Yeah. Only God can take something that wasn't and make something. Amen. Only God can look out upon nothing and create all that we see every day and we're fascinated by it. Yeah. We fascinate ourselves in such ridiculous things sometimes, but when you really look at it, what God has created within our midst is so fascinating, so incredible, so marvelous. <laughs> The justification, the salvation of sinners, the espousing of the Gentiles that had not been people, they were graciously calling of things which were not as if they were. God called us a nation when we were nothing but raggedy people in the streets. God called you to be somebody before you were born out of your mother's womb. When I was a little nappy head boy in Easter, Michigan, God called me to preach his gospel before I knew what preaching the gospel was. Yeah. <laughs> These young people sitting in here, God has called you to be something great. All you've got to do is to have the faith, the uncommon faith that Abraham had to walk in your destiny and to trust God, not just sometimes, not just on Sundays, not just when things are going well, but to trust God at all times, in all situations, and to bring you through anything. God can and God will bring you through whatever you can possibly face. God's trying to bring you through stuff that ain't been created. I'm sorry. God is just trying to bring you through stuff that has not been created. I keep forgetting I'm preaching to teachers. Amen. God has created. There's some things that have not, has not even come into being yet and will face the challenge. But God is right here ready to take us through it. See, you remember a few years ago, we didn't know anything about an internet. We didn't know anything about cyber security. We didn't know anything about internet scams. But don't you know that the same God who protected your grandmama down in the Mississippi Valley is the same God that can get us through cyber warfare, war terrorism, and all of these things that we face today. There is nothing new under the sun to God. It's only new to us because we haven't seen it in our generation. He believed in God. Who he believed is God. A God who revives the dead. Boy, I thank God for that. There's some days I wake up and I think I'm dead. But by the grace of God, he revives me and I'm able to get up and do things that I thought I was not able to do. When things look like they're said and done, God speaks life into that situation. I remember when I was a student in Tuskegee and they told me I had to go home. I didn't go home. I walked along the line of faith. I prayed to my God and I said, God, you brought me here. I trust you to get me out of here. And four years later, I walked out of there not going home, but going on to graduate school because I had received. about it because I don't, I, I, I don't mind. Let me tell you, I don't mind talking about it. You know why I don't mind talking about it? Because anybody who sees it as bragging, don't know me, don't understand the story. Because see, the reason why I can talk about it, because I know I didn't do it. It wasn't me that brought me through four years at Tuskegee University. It was God who gave me not only the opportunity, but God gave me the wherewithal. God gave me the ability. I know God blessed me. I know God brought me out because I could not have done it on my own. My family didn't have the money, and I don't think I was as smart as I thought I was. But God was able to take all of that mess and to bring something out of it. Don't think God is not willing to work in your situation right now. 
old woman and built a nation. Oh, wait, let me correct that. Not a nation, many nations. We sit here today because God has done something. God did something magnificent way back then. It is faith indeed to build upon the all-sufficiency of God for the accomplishment of that which is impossible to anything but the all-sufficiency of God. I know y'all missed that. Amen. I'm going to say it again. Yeah. It, let, me, let me try to say it slower. It is faith indeed to build upon the all-sufficiency of God for the accomplishment of that which is impossible to anything but the all-sufficiency of God. In other words, there are some things that nothing can fix but God. There are some things that, that need an all-sufficient God to get in there and shake it up and to twist it up and to make it right. There are some things that we are trying to get through on our own that we've been fighting through forever that is forever and, and then forever and forever. Some of us forever. We're still fighting through some stuff that we've been fighting through forever. But God wants to get in there and to show us how to come out. He's all sufficient. That means he has everything we need to be what God wants us to be. It is by faith in God that we become accepted of him. All we got to do is have faith. All the rest is done. Whom he believed. How? Number two, how he believed. I'm going to read it all in the passage for you. 16 through 21 says, Therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of faith, the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations in the presence of God, whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and caused those things which did not exist out to be, who contrary to hope, in hope, believed so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be, and not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body that was already dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully considered see convinced that he had promised he was able to perform Amen. and therefore it is accounted to him as righteousness Amen. how he believed against hope well. <clears throat> he believed in hope there was a hope against him, a natural hope his natural body was against this belief that he could bear children all of the arguments of sense and reason and experience, which is the such the case, he began supporting him in his hope. He believed in hope which arose from his faith for the consideration of God's all sufficiency. Yes, yes. That he might become the father of many nations. Therefore, God, by his great, mighty, almighty grace, enabled him to thus believe against hope. Yes. It was fit that he was be able to be the father of the faithful. That he should have something more than just an ordinary faith. It is fitting that the person who would be the father of the faithful should have an uncommon faith. A faith that wasn't supposed to happen. A faith against hope. A faith against all that he had known, had understood. A faith that all against all that he had seen. A faith against everything that was known to man at that time. The apparent impossibility that the promise would ever be fulfilled, it didn't stagger him. God said it. Abraham believed it. They settled it. I wonder what that would be like for us. God has promised to take care of us, and yet we're fighting to take care of ourselves. And to be frank, some of us are fighting against God. God is trying to take care of us. And we're fighting him. It's kind of like you, you, it's, if you can't swim. You fall into the water and somebody's trying to save you. 
Yeah. And if you're flailing and you're kicking and you're what you gonna do? What happens? What happens? Right? You not gonna draw them. Right? That's what that's what we're doing sometimes. That's what we find we're doing. Our faith is so weak that God is trying to do something in our lives and trying to save us from the stuff. And we're steady fighting. We kick and we scream and we push it. We stuff and we do all this. And as a result, we're pushing God farther away than we need to, as opposed to relaxing. Did you see what, what, what Abraham did? When God said this, he went on in faith. Can you imagine that? Yeah. I mean, think about it. This guy's 100 years old. His wife is 99. God told him, nigga, I have a baby. <laughs> and he believed in it. That's an uncommon faith. We have the benefit of the book. We have the benefit of the book. All that is written in his 66 books, in the book, we have the benefit of the book, and we are still unable to have the uncommon faith that Abraham had when he did not have the benefit of the book. All he had was the word of God. Amen. We need that uncommon faith today. How do we inherit this uncommon faith? Verses 22, 23 to 25 says this. Now it was written for his sake, of, not for his sake alone. It was imputed to him, but also for us. Thank you. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him, who raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead, who was delivered up because of our offenses and raised because of our justification. The historical narrative of his justification by faith was not written for the sake of him alone. There was a sense, of course, in which it was written for his sake, a permanent record of his acquittal and how his now perfect standing with God, but it was also written for us. Our faith is likewise reckoned for the righteousness when we believe on God who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. The only difference is this. Abraham believed that it is his weakness body and Sarah's bare womb. We believe that God has given life to the dead by raising the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ delivered up. He was delivered up for our offenses, not his. He was delivered up for our justification. We are saved because of Christ. We are delivered because of Christ. We have the opportunity to change our lives because Christ has given us strength. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ which gives me strength. I can overcome my problems. I can overcome my addictions. I can overcome my despair. I can overcome my pain. I can forgive, not because I can by myself. I can love, not because I can by myself. I can treat people right, not because I can by myself, but because Philippians 4.13 says to me, I can do all things through Christ which gives me strength. And if Christ yeah. so yeah. gives me the strength, then yeah. I can walk in dignity. Yeah. I can walk in yeah. the care integrity. I can walk knowing that God is on my side. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That gives you an uncommon freedom that people don't have. All right. yeah. That's what this uncommon faith does. It changes your walk. Amen. Yeah. It gives us the ability to do things that we could not do before. Yeah. That's all I heard you crack. As you talked about the little boy that was killed this weekend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm so yes. tired of the same yes. the same narrative. Right, right. The mayor should have cried at his press conference this week. I, I, I'm not going that far. Yeah. <laughs> the mayor should have cried. Yeah. Because even though I believe that he did not know the language in the documents, his administration wrote that language. Yes. All right. He should feel the pain. Yes. And I'm, I'm convinced that he does. Yeah. All right. yeah. The reality is that there is too many young Black 
men in particular, All right. being gunned down in our streets. Here we stand on the 50th anniversary of Bloody Sunday. Where black people are only saying we want the right to vote like any other citizen in this country. And the brutal police sick dogs on them and beat them. And Imagine the level of faith that it took for a John Lewis and a Hosea Williams and a Martin oh, King and so many other people to walk across that bridge on that day. Can you imagine the faith that it took for them to continue even after that? That was 65. Can you imagine that the faith it's going to take for us to get over the next bridge of trouble, the next situation, the next difficulties? But you want me to tell you something that I am convinced of within my heart? I am convinced within my heart that if we open up our hearts and we receive Jesus Christ fully and we walk as Christ to cause us to walk, we will march over the next bridge of trouble. We will march out of the desperation that we're in. We will change the system, but we cannot change the system. We are sitting complacently by watching things happen and pretending as if we had no contribution to it. We cannot change it. Standing on our own and doing it all by ourselves. The only way they were able to make that walk is they were singing the songs of Zion. They were giving their honor to God. They were asking for God's help. It was an uncommon faith in God that allowed them to walk across that bridge. It was an uncommon faith in God that allowed them to put their lives on the line. And you know what, brothers and sisters? It's going to take within us an yeah. uncommon faith in God to move from where we are to yeah. where we need to be. We ought to stop complaining. We ought to yeah. stop whining. We ought to stop criticizing. Yeah. We ought to stop backbiting, buying together with the spirit of the living God who's already laid out a path for us. Yeah. He's yeah. just waiting for us to get on that path and walk in the way that he wants us to walk to achieve the goals that he wants us to achieve. Right. You all are achievers in this room. Amen. You have yeah. achieved something. Yeah. You have overcome something. Yeah. We stand here today because you all were brave enough and courageous enough to walk through the doors of that church when this congregation was lily white and to yeah. say, I'm going to take a seat on one of these pews and I'm going to worship my God in yeah. this place. You stayed in this place. Yeah. You worshiped God in this place. Yeah. You stayed when the white folks decided they wanted to leave. You yeah. stayed in this place and you worship your God. We are accomplished people in this room. That's no doubt. But our work is not done. God is not finished. There's more for us to do. There's more for us to see. There's more for us to experience. And there's more change. And I'll continue to warn you, we ought not become like somebody else was. All right. Yes. We ought not become so high polluted and so high society that we look down on our neighbors who are moving in because they don't meet the standards that we want them to have. Because you remember, that's the same thing they said about us about the Come on now. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. As hard as it may be, yes. and as difficult as our struggle might be, an uncommon faith yes. will lead us to where God wants us to be. Yes. We can't earn it. We can't Grace. work for salvation. Grace. We must simply believe it. Grace. Our faith, our uncommon faith, yes. that reminds us that God, that we believe in, without doubt that he will fulfill his promises in our lives. I believe that God will do it in our time. So don't worry. Don't fret. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't give out. Be, be believers. Believe that God will deliver us from our pain. God will deliver us from our suffering, from our injustices, and from our oppression. I believe that our faith will lead us to be exactly where God wants us to be. By faith, we will learn more about Jesus. 
By faith, we will impact the lives of this community. By faith, we will raise up strong families, strong young men and strong young women. By faith, we will encourage our youth. By faith, we will enrich the lives of our seniors. We will support our single mothers. We will strengthen our men. By faith, we will make clear to this city and to this county and to this country that black lives matter. And in fact, all lives matter. Amen. We've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. Because he's never failed. By faith, Abel offered up a God to a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By faith, Enoch was taken away so he did not see death. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with a godly fear, and he prepared an ark for the saving of his household. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go to a place that he would receive his inheritance. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive a seed and to bore a child where she could lead a nation. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, he offered up this child that God had given him. By faith, Isaac, being blessed of God, he blessed jo Jacob and he blessed Esau concerning the things that were to come. Yeah. By faith, yeah. Jacob, when he was dying, he blessed each of his sons. Yeah. By faith, Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents. Right. By yeah. faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called a son of Pharaoh's daughter. By faith, he forsook yeah. Egypt. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea. Yeah. By faith, the walls of Jericho yeah. fell down. By faith, Herod tongue and led Blessed Amen. Amen. to freedom, Amen. risking her life in her own name. By faith, Amen. Brother Martin Luther King Drake Jr. spoke of a dream and a nightmare as well as a mountaintop. By Amen. faith, John Lewis and Hosea Williams crossed the bridge that they did not enter a city, entered into an era of freedom, of justice. By faith, Donald Wright laid the foundation of this church and invited us in. By yes. faith, a young black man set out on a journey to lead this nation, and many did not believe he could do it when he won, when he stepped out to do it, but he said, yes, we can. By faith, we built an extension of this church. By yes. faith, we brought that building across the street. By oh, faith, we continue right. our journey for our brothers and sisters in this community. And by faith, we will do so much more. An uncommon faith. We, like Abraham, can raise our children. An uncommon faith. We, like Abraham, can lead a nation. Yes. An uncommon faith. We, like Abraham, can do things that they said we were not able to do or we were too old to do. An uncommon faith. They can move mountains. An uncommon faith. They can heal the sick. An uncommon faith. They give strength to love. An uncommon faith. They give power to forgive. An uncommon faith. To love our family. And our neighbors and our nation and our city, and uncommon faith yeah. to continue to build the kingdom of God on earth, yeah. and uncommon faith yeah. to love God with all our hearts, our soul, our mind, and our strength, and uncommon faith yeah. to make a difference and live as Christ did in this yeah. humanity, and uncommon faith. Amen. And their common faith begins with a journey. Yeah. It begins with a step. Yeah. It begins with a decision. Yeah. It begins when we decide to give our lives to Christ and to accept yeah. through our faith yeah. what he has already done for us. Yeah. Perhaps there's someone under the sound of my voice who's never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. My prayer is that you will do so today. Yeah. Perhaps if someone on the side of my voice is not a member of church, we pray that you will come today. Yeah. Perhaps you've never been baptized and you'd like to be baptized. We invite yeah. you today. This is your opportunity. We're going to stand to make it easier for you to get out and to walk down here, but we invite you today.